All right, Sophia, we'll start over here again. Uh, talk us through that, that tough match today. Um, yeah, it was a tough match. Jessica's such a tough player to play. Um, I've lost to her like a few times and in practice, so um, it was a good win for me. I'm happy with the way I competed and came back. At 0 3 and 1 4 in the second set, what are you saying to yourself? I mean, I'm just like, I don't want to lose 6 1 because, like, that tends to happen to me. But then I just, I just kept fighting and then I found my groove and I started playing better and better. And I was really happy uh, with the way that I was able to change things in the second because first I did some things wrong and then I made the adjustment in the second. And then it's funny, at 5-2 in the third set, I start making double faults. And I, that was like the one thing I start, like stopped doing in the second set. I was making more first serves. And then I was like, OK, this cannot happen right now. Like, I want to close it out. I want to leave and be done. So I'm happy that I was able to close it out. Real uh, quick follow, Do you, did you figure out what was going on with your serve? It, it seemed like you were uncharacteristically um, struggling with it. Yeah, I mean, I was missing so many first serves like I was getting quite annoyed and yeah I guess hard on myself and then I just started making them and I started going after my second serves which was good and then yeah it kind of let me down a little bit at 5-2 but then you know a win is a win so I'll take it. So if you're, you're the defending champion at the Australian Open you've made a couple of trips down here now have you got into any of the Australian lingo, any of the Australian foods? No. <laughs> Have you not tried things like Vegemite? No, no, I haven't. Are you game to try it? No. <laughs> what, what about kangaroo? Um, um, this is genuine. I'm, I'm genuine. No, question. no, I did. Um, that's kind of not in my mind. I'm trying to, um, yeah, I'm just trying to focus here and play and. I would, you know, I'm just going to not say anything or else I'm going to lose and then I'm going to get mad. So, um, uh, tennis. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions in the room? We go a reminder to those of you online, if you have a question for Sophia, please use the raise your hand function. David from the Tennis Channel, when you're ready, please. Hi, Sonia. Hi. Uh, I just had a question about the last uh, year or so. A lot of us have had to put certain plans on hold, things we've been wanting to do or accomplish uh, in our lives. Is there anything that you were looking forward to in the last year that you haven't gotten to do yet or something that when the situation gets better that you're looking forward to doing uh, when things get back to normal? Well, obviously, last year after Australia, you know, things were normally supposed to happen, you know, like different things. And then unfortunately that did not happen, which was tough. But then, yeah, I was just waiting to like, until like, like uh, tournaments would start happening. And luckily, you know, before your soap since was happening, it was open. And yeah, I mean, I obviously wish there was more tournaments because I would have like reconnected with my fans. I was super excited for the U.S. swing. And then, of course, everything was on hold due to COVID, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy with the way I was able to, you know, come back strong and close out the year quite well. Um, but then, yeah, I'm looking forward to right now, no more COVID and uh, more tournaments and more bubble life, for sure. But um, it's obviously nice to be back uh, on tour and playing and competing again. Anything fun off the court that you're looking forward to doing, like seeing a movie, something like that? <laughs> um, I mean, I hope I'm not going to have time for that, but I guess uh, just walk around. I mean, here we're walking around the city and stuff. So, um, you know, maybe go to some stores. Depends how I do. We'll see. <laughs> Howard, next question, please. I uh, wanted to ask you about <clears throat> what it's like out there this week. Uh, a whole bunch of tournaments going on, men's events, women's events, team event. Uh, it's not the typical non-Grand Slam week. Uh, and I'm just wondering if you can sense that. Does it feel more crowded in the locker room or the players' restaurant or lounge, or there are a lot of people around that might not normally be uh, in a tournament that normally you'd be playing in a smaller size tournament when it's not a Grand Slam? 
Right. Um, I mean, players, everyone, it's the same. I see everyone, but um, definitely the fans. I mean, obviously, it's not full capacity, but I see some fans obviously coming and supporting me in my matches. So obviously, that's really nice to play in front of them. You know, I've really missed playing in front of them. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for next week um, to play in front of a bigger crowd. And uh, hopefully the Aussie fans will be on my side. So, uh, yeah, um, so uh, let's let's see what happens. Gonzalo from BA Tennis. Next question, please. Hi, Sonia. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Your next opponent will be oh, uh, Pavly Chinkova or Muguruza. Do you have any preference? Um, no, but definitely I don't have a preference. They're both really tough players. I've played, obviously, both of them. Um, so uh, obviously, if I play Garbinia, it will obviously bring obviously bring back uh, last year for me. So there might be some emotions. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but um, Anastasia, I mean, I've played her a few times, and she's obviously a tough player. So uh, yeah, no preference. I'm just happy that I'm through to the next round, and I'll do everything I can to get ready for next match. Courtney, next question, please. Hey, Sonia. Um, I'm curious. You got you got a good number of matches in in Abu Dhabi, and obviously here you're you're playing you know deep again. What exactly are you looking for in terms of you know what you want out of this week um, in Melbourne? Well, I obviously want to um, continue my matches. You know, I feel like that's a good way to you know get more confidence for me coming up to um, Australian Open. So I'm happy that I'm just you know I feel like this chairman. I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. You know, I'm just trying to get as much matches as I possibly can and try to feel my game and then come Australian Open. Uh, it's going to be different. <laughs> more pressure on myself and everything. So I guess this week this week is a little bit of a relaxation week for for me. I guess mentally because I'm not really crazy right now you know I'm kind of trying to you know stay as calm as possible because uh, coming up it'll be really really hectic yeah and I was going to ask you about that is that as Howard mentioned there's so much going on around Melbourne Park right now in this lead up with ATP Cup and you know multiple tournaments happening and things that attention kind of gets spread out and so it's it's a little bit for a lot of the top players I think a quieter kind of week before uh, Melbourne than it might typically be. Um, do you think that 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 helps you at all? That that the hype machine, in a lot of ways, hasn't hasn't kicked into full gear. You know, the ten days before uh, the Australian Open. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy that there's different events going on. I feel like it, things are coming back to somewhat normal. It's obviously nice to see a lot of matches coming and playing. But yeah, I feel like this is a good way to you know start easy. You know, there's some fans coming and supporting you know everyone, so which is really nice to see. And I'm really grateful and thankful for them to coming. Um, but yeah, I think definitely it's it's more exciting you know to you know come Australian Open and you're gonna it's gonna be a bigger crowd, obviously more noise, more hype and everything. So I think. Uh, Everyone's using this week to somehow kind of like lay back, chill a little bit, you know, but um, come Australian, it's going to be loud. And I'm obviously super excited and looking forward to that. So I hope I'll be playing well for it, you know, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, we'll come back in the room. Karen. Just wondering if you've had a chance to get out away from your hotel, out into the city to have a coffee or to have a meal and what your impressions are, because while they're living semi-normally, there aren't a lot of international visitors, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah every day we're going out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, being in the room for two weeks, 19 hours, I mean, it's obviously tough and obviously really like wanted to go out, so I was looking forward for the quarantine to be done, so literally walking around for like two hours, probably a day, literally just walking around the city, getting some fresh air, no masks, so it was obviously super nice, and see all restaurants open, actually one restaurant that we went to last year, you know, during lunch, it closed, it doesn't exist, though it obviously was a little bit devastating for me, because I'm obviously very superstitious, so I was planning to go there for Australian Open, but no, gotta find a, another way, so we'll see. Do people recognize you? Do they come up to you? What, what's that like for you as the defending champion? Unfortunately, no one has actually come up to me during this time. But um, I guess it's good because, I, know, I mean, I'm not going to stress so much about it. I feel like if everyone was coming up to me, then I'd kind of panic a little bit, you know, because, like, leading up, I should open. But I'm sure, you know, at least I'm hoping that uh, if I'll do well in the Australian Open, then people would come, you know, come to me. So, I mean, we're seeing it. Uh, the Crown Towers, by the way, <laughs> if anyone wants to come, you know, <laughs> I'm there.
Maybe they're social distancing, so. I don't know, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> what was the restaurant? The, uh, I forgot the name, shoot. Yeah, I said shoot. Um, I forgot the name, but it was, it was a Vietnamese place. Was I, a Vietnamese place. Yeah, I recognized it, and then I told my dad that it's closed, and he's like, this is not the restaurant, and then on, on his navigation, it was that one. And then, yeah, he's like, how did you recognize it? I'm like, because I remember the place really well, obviously, we went there every day. Because I'm so superstitious. <laughs> uh, and we will finish up front for our last question. How did you feel when you won the Australian Open last year? Um, it was very special because um, I worked so hard, you know, to get it to that position. And, of course, you know, it just meant, like, the world to me. You know, I had a great two weeks of my life. And... You know, winning my first Grand Slam is obviously such a special feeling. And obviously, I want to inspire people like you, young generation, girls like you and boys, uh, to, you know, follow their dreams. And uh, that's what I said in my speech, you know, dreams happen. And if you follow it and set your mind to it, you can achieve anything. Obviously, it's not guaranteed, but, you know, you have to believe in yourself and you, and you have to have, like, people around you who really believe in you. So your parents, obviously, and family who will be there and support you and... Yeah, anything is possible. Okay, Sophia, thank you for your time. That concludes our press conference. Thank you.